gentlemen, 34 drivers will be at the starting line of the Saints World 600 here at Charlotte tomorrow. Those drivers who do not qualify today will go back home never having seen the green starter's flag. Those drivers bring their cars, their crew, and their hopes to Charlotte each year. Charlotte Speedway, nicknamed by granddaddy of NASCAR. Its spirit and its history is reflected in the kind of men who journey here. They take pride in coming, and Charlotte and NASCAR take pride in welcoming them. These men know the odds they face in this competition, and these sportsmen have learned through hard won experience to accept the risk. Live with disappointment in that constant quest for that often elusive victory. Tomorrow, when this great race begins, you will be witnessing a competitive bet in the field of South Star Auto Racing. The finest mechanics, engineers, crew chiefs, without whose support, no driver can exist. It is this combined effort to build winning cars and winning teams. And speaking of winning teams, Tomorrow, Rick Petty will receive the first leg trophy of this year's annual Rick Witch Cup competition. Petty and his resume leads in the point that he's received for 40,000 pounds. The Witch Cup competition is then another incentive for American stock car racing. And his list of winners reads like a who's who in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. On a personal note, Scarlet Motor Speedway has extended a special invitation to a man too long absent from the racing scene, Lee Petty, whose driving record was surpassed only by his son, won his first NASCAR Grand National competition here in Charlotte some years ago. We're hoping that he will join us today to watch his son attempt to win this main plan, and by so doing, be the first driver in NASCAR history to win every major speedway competition. Gentlemen, start your engines! I know, not for six years. Why? Don't matter why, I just don't. And I had never won in Charlotte. Well, it's all right, son. Nobody wins more. Well, I'll be the first. Well, if you want it, then you go on out and take it. Now, if you come, I might can win. I told you I don't race, and I don't watch race. Now, how many times I've said that? I don't race, and I don't watch race. Well, if you come, I might can win. I don't race. I don't watch me. I don't break. I don't watch me. Richard Petty in car 43 and teammate Pete Hamilton have dominated this race here at Darlington today. Petty is presently running in first position and Hamilton is moving in fifth position. Hamilton is driving car 42, a number that has carried several drivers in the past few years since Lee Petty retired from racing. Petty lost control of the car. Julie, you'll stay secure. Hey, you're going to feel clear. Clear the infield, please. The fire crew is moving out onto the track and the caution flight slows down the field. Everybody please remain calm. They're pulling Teddy to a totally demolished vehicle now. You too, stay here. Stay in front of the pack. 
you got to push on the rough spot. That's it. you got to push on the rough spot. George Fellows. I want to try a little mighty in front of a drink for my bad side. I said my name was Fellows. Yeah, I'm a writer. I know, I heard you. I heard you. I'm sure. Next driver like you, three times Grand National Champion. You figured this old Belgian boy takes your driving like it did yours when you took one to the fence? Now, if I understand that question correctly, you better ask that, Richie. After you went through the wall of your tongue, you walked away from racing. Why? It's my choice. Thing is, though, you haven't been to race since. I don't race, and I don't watch races. But even your son? The conversation is ended. Racing's been good to the petties. Very good. Your news. I think you owe me some answers. Now, what we got here is a matter of a possible concussion. Now, Richard may snap out of it and be shuffled out of here. On the other hand, you may not. Until I know which way it's going, I don't owe you nothing. And that's the end of this conversation. Where I am and where I'm from is my concern and my concern only. Like you did a little uh, sweetening on that engine. Yeah, sure, a little bit here and there. Built. Yeah, watch your full shoot on Richie. Don't mess it up. Yeah, it was a 28 Ford. Uh, uh, tore it down from uh, firewall to radiator. Got about another 10 to 15 miles an hour out of it, too. Get out. What? I said get out. My bad side. What? My bad ear.
Lee Petty, a random in North Carolina. Curtis Cross. Hey, you from Quebec? Montreal, Bordeaux Rouge. I move around a lot. Yeah, I can tell. you feel like going in and warming up some of that cornbread? Lee and Richard have been kidnapped by some wild fool in a hopped up car. We have driven this truck across a quarter of the state and ourselves half out of our minds looking for them. And you want me to heat up cornbread? But you know you're the only one to make that old gas stove work. Oh, Elizabeth, now don't worry. Lee and Richard, they're bound to come home sooner or later. Maybe in a pine box. Hey, you ran out of my wagon. Oh, by golly, I did, didn't I? Julie, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to have to buy him a new one, I expect. I ain't talking about the darn wagon. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do about it. So I'm going in the house and warm up that cornbread with my own self. Hey, Ma, you can't do your mister best. Well, you do have a way of putting things, Maurice.
Oh, they beat up 60 horsepower. I tell you, and they we left them revenues like they were standing still. I be Please? Where are you been? Run out of gas, why they nobody would have caught it. That, that Curtis, he drives like there's no tomorrow. Curtis? And Curtis Cross, the former owner of this lovely little piece of machinery. You gonna tell me where you been, Lee? What, for, former owner? Uh... What did you say that former owner for, Lee? Because it's the truth. Well, I know you don't lie. Well? Well? Did you see us take off? <laughs> like a rooster after a jewel bus. <laughs> Where you been, Lee? In jail. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he was carrying 60 gallons of white light in the back of this thing here. Isn't she beautiful? Look at that space in there, huh? Yeah, and it took us more than two hours for Curtis me to convince the law that Richard and I was just along for the ride. Curtis? Uh, Curtis Cross, former owner. Former owner. Former owner. Well, the poor cow, like he had to have a lawyer, you know. So uh, I just got one heck of a good deal. <laughs> you bought this, sir? Is it really yours? Well, yeah, you like it? Oh, do I, it's just a can't have a tail. <laughs> <laughs> How much you pay for it, Lee? Uh, look at here, 180 horsepower. How much did you pay for it, Lee? It's got special carbs on it, and, and, and a special ground barrel. What did you pay for it, Lee? $300. Three hundred dollars? What are you going to do with this car? Did I show you the suspension? Oh, look, look, see? Right on the inside, I got those high bars in there. I keep them kneeling down on the curb. You know? Lee? What are you going to do with this car? What are you going to do with it, Lee? We're going racing! Oh, no! That's what I figured. <laughs> Lee? The house is on fire. Lee, the house is on fire. What did you say, honey? Hey, Lee, the house is on fire. Well, the house is on fire. Why didn't you say something? Oh! I told you, you should have heated the cornbread.
Well, what do you think? Well, what do you think, I think? Well, if I knew, I wouldn't ask. Seventy-five, eighty-five, ninety-five, a hundred and ten, and twenty percent for the house. Twenty? Oh, my. Well, there you go. There's half for Mama, put in the bank, and half for Baby. Hey, do you know something I don't know? Yeah, I know the baby needs new tires. Now, how's it feel winning our first race? Well, the car costs three hundred. Uh, the house is worth about twelve. Uh, his uh, lost wages are about six. I figure this win has cost us about two thousand dollars. Well, man has got to do what he's got to do.
You miserable son of a gun! <laughs> you fooled me! I'd rather foul you than foul you! <laughs> well, let's see now. That's two fifty. That's two hundred and fifty dollars for you and three hundred for me. What are you talking about? I was going to take first place. Back there. As far as I'm concerned, this is the race that was run for the money. Why you? Ah. <laughs> Transmission or whatever. What? All Richard Petty ever talks about is race cars, he and Bobby. Nothing else? 
If Richard doesn't talk about cars, he just doesn't talk. Believe me, we've all tried. Oh, I don't know nothing about race cars. My daddy drives over 50, I get sick. Like I said, forget it. You want a Coke? There's a yellow thing with black spots on your neck. Maybe you'd rather eat that. See you tomorrow. Hi. How's your plug? Your spark has no name. Um, what are your favorite brands? Brands. It is your favorite brand. A plug. That is. Ah, uh, well, I guess you don't have a favorite. Well, like I say, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Say, listen, would you like to drive me home? I mean, I really would like it if you'd drive me home. Okay. No, nah, he's fast. Fast? I did. Oh, I did too. You do too what? Pity him. No, pity. Me and Morris pity. Oh. We always have. Oh. Do you enjoy pity him? Sure. When we first started, he couldn't afford a cruise, so we filled in. Uncle Julie helped us then. Matter of fact, uh, he couldn't even afford the car. He <laughs> sort of borrowed one. A couple of man's car fishes better get those baby faces out of sight. You too. Do I look like a kid? Have all your life. I don't know, Mr. Penny. I'm not a rich man. This is the only car I own. I'm beginning to have some doubts. Well, now, I can understand that. I, uh, Mr. Phillips, I really can't understand it. But don't you see that with your half of the big prize money that I'm going to win here today, why, you can buy 10 more cash. 20 and I don't know nothing about motor racing, Mr. Bailey, but I do know there's a certain risk. Risk? Well, now, don't, don't, don't you worry none about that, uh, Mr. Phillips. If I were you, don't, don't you worry ahead none about it. I, I'm going to take all the risk. But what if you wreck or something? Wreck? Well, that's, that's, uh, that's not a nice thing to say. I mean, that's no way to talk to a man. I mean, you can undermine a, man, I mean, undermine a man's confidence. Well, I would talk like that. I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. I think you hit him right where he lives. I heard he's really very good. Oh, well, tell him. Tell him what? Well, well tell him what you said. Tell him you heard he's very good. Listen, Mr. Penny, I know your reputation as a race driver is just real good. Mm. Well, I don't think I've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, well, I appreciate your concern, Mr. Phillips. But you understand, of course, that I never think about or worry about my own driving. Uh, well, then, I want you to drive it. I want you to drive my car in this race right here today, now. Well, I, I don't know. No, I want you to drive it. I've got every confidence, Mr. Teddy, that me and you are going to make a lot of money. Well, no, no, not, not if you're scared. No. But I ain't scared, Mr. Teddy. I ain't scared a bit. I want you to drive my car. Well, really? I mean, you I'm sure you sure? I'd be proud if you drove my car. Are you sure now? I'm sure, Mr. Teddy. I'm sure. I'm sure you're going to drive my car just fine. Your car ain't fit for racing. It's too heavy. 
the suspension is like a baby buggy. It sucks oil like a hog, and it drinks gas like a drunken sailor. It drifts in the corners like a rowboat, and it steers like a pagan tractor. Imagine it killed that thing. It sure ain't worth fire to blow to hell. Congratulations. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh, Billy, why are we living like this? Well, a man's got to do what he's got to do. Calls his old man Daddy. <laughs> Driver, he's. Oh, uh, Richard meets uh, Ed Kohler. He's been driving north of traffic mostly. Your uh, daddy took the first away from me at Irish Hills last week. I thought I'd come down here and just say goodbye. You should welcome to try if you stick by the rules. I drive by only one rule do whatever you have to to win, everything else just words. Now, listen to me, Kohler. I've called these meetings so us drivers can get together, so we can get a voice with NASCAR. Now, they're nice people, and on, we're all growing. There's a lot of money in it, especially now with uh, factory sponsorship and all. Now, if we don't kill ourselves with crazy driving, we might all share in it. I heard that in there. Apparently, you aren't listening. I heard it. I just think it's stupid. I'm on the track. I don't intend to worry about any union brother in the car behind me. Or in front of you? Anywhere. Racing's out of team sport, that he was never meant to be. The track's one of the few places left in this world where the man with a guts for it can take it off. You ever forget that when you race against me? Ever. He makes me so mad I could just spit. <laughs> Good luck tomorrow, Richard. Oh, uh, by the way, I've uh, wished your father the same. Sounds fair enough. Good. Let's go. Wait a minute. What? Do you have to race against your daddy tomorrow? Well, tomorrow's just the first time that uh, we've had two cars in the same race. Well, you could hire another uh, another driver to take your place. We're a family. We're a team. So you should respect each other. We do respect each other. But what's that got to do with the race tomorrow? Race your What? Well, did you do any good? Nope. Huh. Hmm. You wouldn't have Young women is having a tizzy. Well, I don't see why they should. Now, you can want to order them out. I'm going home. I'll drive you. I'll drive myself. It's snowing on her. Same thing as snowing on me. Now, you just hush up. Just hush up. Now, it is in this stuff. It is all set. No, it is not set. And it is not. And we you be turning your dad in me. I'm sorry we all get to turn his dad in. I first started noticing it about five years ago. What's that? I think it was... Yes, yeah, smart aleck, kid. <laughs> it didn't matter, Mrs. Bethel. I mean, the first two cars that come in, they share the prize money with that much closer to attract the sponsor. It don't matter which of us comes in first in which car. Now, I know you two better than anybody else in the whole world. And I know it is not going to be that simple. Now, you won too many times to ever want to settle for second. And you are too anxious for your first win ever to hold back. Now, when you two go out there to that track tomorrow, I just want you to remember that I said it first. Well, she's right about one thing. 
Yeah. That's, I only drive one way. To win. It's always been that way with me. Yeah, I always will be. For both of us. I didn't win the race. I'm going to get him next time. Here you want to bet there, boy. <laughs> You're crazy. You're both crazy. The whole lot is crazy. You know, I think you'd better marry that girl. You.
She's the 21st. A wedding dress. I know that, huh? Then what are you doing out here? This thing's supposed to turn 5,000 RPMs, and I can't get it up about 4,500. I'm trying to make adjustments on the carburetor. We should all get to here. Honey, I know that, but if I don't get this thing running, we'll come back empty. I don't know about your RPM or your carburetor. I just want you to get in the house and marry me. Honey, I got every intention. I know they just named you rookie of the year. I know you just won $8,000. I know without the money we couldn't afford to get married, but I'm not going to share you with a race car on my wedding day. It'll only take a couple of minutes. Just get in the house and get dressed. Don't go back to seven. Day. Everybody had a good time. There's some punch left downstairs. Operator. Uh, I, I got the RPMs up now. It, it's, uh, it's turning 5,000 now. He used to call me some of the last, and always does. About my wedding night. Well, I'm thankful I'll be able to look them straight in the eye and tell them that on my wedding night, the most important night of my life, Richard did finally get his RPM up. Please. Eddie is all right. He's all right. 
Did you really crash? Yes, honey. You could say that. looking for Cola. I can't say I tried or, or wanted to stop him. Well, you should have. Cola didn't have anything to do with what happened today. He hurt Lee. Lee hurt himself. Now, if the track felt that Cola had fouled him, they would have lodged a complaint. Maybe it wasn't obvious to them, but it was, it is to us. Linda. Lee has been racing all his life, and he knows the risks. He wants it. It's what keeps him alive. And Richard is cut out of the same cloth. I can't say that. Oh, well, you better. After today, we are in for some tough times. We're nearly broke. So... You had better get on Richard's team. You're going to have some lonely days ahead. This isn't exactly the best time to announce it. I'm going to have a baby. Wow. I am glad to know that you and Richard have been working at something together. <laughs> Why don't you spool down that Winnie of yours? Ma, ain't he a suckle and a half tonight? Old Ledford here getting a little edgy. Put a man through the fence today. Little Paul was for thought there. Teddy put himself through that fence. Curse me. Too much time following you around to get to be fearful. It occurs to me. Also, Rand usually is a shaky place to live. He should know. He's been there a lot more times than Teddy. Only the veggies, sweet lips. We've all been trying to organize it. 
Yeah, but uh, he's the one who told him I started it. They can't do that to you, Curtis. Well, they've done it. One tired, faded, old soul land. That'll be cheap for you to make an example, isn't it? Well, you see? He's mine, too. Look, I'm uh, sorry it's hurt, but uh, it's got nothing to do with me. Hey, caller. Did you know that old Curtis got thrown out of the circuit today? I heard. He's playing with the house out there. Told you I was against you. Yeah, that's right, you did. Now, let me tell you something uh, real special. Lee said he raised his son with real manners. And a fair play. And always told them to act like gentlemen. Good for them. And they don't drink. Did you know they don't drink? Good for them. Uh, look, uh, compete, uh, you get hurt. They're all of that. Uh, Freddy competed and, uh, you got hurt. Captain Daniel. Yeah. You're right, caller. You can have it any of us. I'm sure glad when you come here starting with that. Well, he could have action, didn't he? Yes. I'm glad he did because he wanted to talk to you about it. Yeah, he's got a piece of fruit, man. I love that. Hang down the road I'm traveling hang down the road It ended again Wondering when I'll lose me this hang down the road Hang down the road I'm toting the hang down the road I'm asking the rain I'm asking again When does the sunshine start? Spread my dreams in Asheville Spread them in the morn Now I'm off to Charlotte A little shy of form I rule myself And I've always fooled myself Nobody's so old I go a little long, but maybe I fool myself. Sure as the trees keep growing, sure as the rivers I flow, I've got to get my wheels free, free of the town down road.
Curtis. Richard? Well, I'll be... I'll be... How are you? Okay, okay. How you been doing? Oh, fine. I had it going pretty good, you know. But I blew a whole two laps short of first money. So you was. It's good to see you, Curtis. Hey, are you doing pretty good for yourself? Yeah, things are looking up. Yeah, well, uh, I come down here just uh, just for kicks, you know. These outlaw tracks are a hell of a lot of fun. Just to keep my hands in it, you know. I got a lot of good things going for myself. Real good things. Listen to me trying to bull you. Why do you have to find me in a place like this? Curtis, I need you here. It's been uh, about a year and a half since Daddy had his wreck, and he's talking about driving again. What I hear, uh, he can't handle it. You're right. But I don't want to be the one that has to tell him, uh, but I think you can. Mm -hmm. Listen, I have driven, and I've seen many more times this tailpipe than he's seen of mine. Uh-uh, I'm not going to talk to him. You can do it, Curtis. You're the only one that can. Just just be gentle. <laughs> gentle with your paw? Yeah, you just kind of drop around for breakfast in the morning and take him outside and just, uh, you know, talk old times. You really believe he'll be happy to see me? Heck yeah, the whole crowd would be glad to see you. Just change your shirt. Gone two hours. Some conversation they're having. Let's go back. Yeah! 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you two having fun? <laughs> well, he beat me by ten feet. The uh, truth is, I should have beat you by ten laps. No, the real truth is that neither of us are what we once were. So that's it. That's all. That's the end of it. Mr. Petty? Guess he just wanted to take a little nap. Never could wake him up. Come on, let's go. Remember the first day we met, you gave me a ride home? Yeah. Did you know I was scared to death? Why are you bring that up now? No reason. Except your driving scares the daylights out of me sometimes. Me too. Sometimes. Well, man's got to do what a man's got to do. You know, you ought to marry that girl. I did. Oh, that's right, you did, didn't you? Yeah, you did it all. All of it's been done. Well, not quite. Not quite? Well, you got trucks over there to pull trailers to haul cars in. You got buildings that go from here to Never Never Land. You're building 14 race cars. You build on any more, you're going to end up in the road. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Charlotte. What about Charlotte? Well, we're running out of this coming week. Yeah, I know, I know. I read the paper. I'd like for you to come. I don't race. And I don't watch races. For six years you hadn't been. Why? Don't matter why, I just don't. Well, I had never won in Charlotte. It's all right, son. Nobody wins them all. Well, I can be the first. But if you want it, you go on out and get it. You come, and uh, maybe I will. I told you, I don't race, and I don't watch races. Now, how many times do I have to tell you that? better. I gave him and he got more up for himself. I mean, he don't need me in Charlotte. He needed him. Him and Maurice. Charlotte in 1948. Hard Buick and two scared kids. Now you needed them and they were there. Now you owe him, Lee. Owe him? Owe him? I gave him everything I had. I raised him good. I raised him and I beat him. And I taught him how to race others and beat them. Oh, him. Oh, woman, that debt has been paid. Lee, we're not talking about debt. Deep down inside you, you ain't quit. Well, you think you have. 
but you haven't. You still want to be first. Well, you are the best man I ever knew. But you can't be first no more. And you can't quit. So you're just hanging somewhere in there in the middle. And it's a mighty poor place for a man to live. If you ever want to have peace of mind, you are going to have to go to Charlotte with Richard. Yeah. Mm-hmm.